this is what guys who think they have riz this is what they say it didn't really make me feel anything this is nothing hi everybody welcome back to my youtube channel a bitch is back talking about books and today we are going to be discussing the last book of the dreamland billionaire series it's called final offer it follows callahan as the third brother of the series. It follows Callahan and his love story. If you don't know anything about the series, it is a romance series following each specific billionaire brother as they try to get money from their grandfather's will. So the overall arcing story of the entire series, which is kind of, you need a little back a backstory, is that the three brothers, Rowan, Declan, and Callahan, have a grandfather who just died and their grandfather was the owner CEO of this multi-billion dollar company and he died. When their grandfather died, he had a will saying that he was going to gift his three grandsons shares of the company and certain things that you get in a will, property, money, etc, etc, but under certain conditions. And each brother has different things that they need to do in order for all of them to be able to get their inheritance from their dead grandfather. Each book follows the different brothers on their journey to finishing the task that their dead grandfather gave them in order to get the money from the will. This third brother is named Callahan and this follows his journey to getting the money for the will and also his love story because these are romance books. It follows Callahan, if you don't know who that is, he is an ex-hockey player. He was in the NHL and he was also an addict. He was addicted to alcohol. And this book is following Callahan and Alana, which is the main lead woman in this book, and their love story. It is a second chance romance. Friends to lovers, kind of, because it's a second chance romance. They were childhood friends to lovers. And then they broke up for six years, never saw each other again. They had a falling out. And then it picks up, the start of the book happens six years after their initial breakup. And part of the reason why they broke up was because of Callahan's addiction to alcohol. And with Alana, she lives by a lake house with her daughter. So she does have a daughter of around five years old. She's not bad in this book. She's kind of cute, not gonna lie. She's raising her daughter and her dream is to own a bakery. She really loves baking. And she's lived at the lake house that was gifted to her by Callahan's dead grandfather because she was a family friend for like ever and lived in that house, which is technically Callahan's grandfather's house for a long time. The reason why Callahan comes back into Alana's life after six years of never seeing each other is because his part of the will that he needs to get done is to sell the house that Alana is living in, the lake house that she lives in. So this forces them to finally see each other after six years, after this big falling out, after Callahan had this addiction that basically broke them up, is forced back into Alana's life in order to finish off the will so that he and his brothers are able to get their inheritance. And overall, my thoughts on the book. I feel like this book, just like the rest of the series, was average. It wasn't good, it wasn't bad, it kind of made me feel nothing, and I think there was so much potential, but in execution, it just did not hit the mark. It sits at over 500 pages, and for a romance book, that is a lot. That is a lot, okay? Um, a Mariana Zapata book is around 600 pages. That is a slow, slow burn book. People don't really consider these slow burns, and I honestly think that there were a lot of scenes in this book that could have been cut out entirely, and the story would have been a-okay. I think there was a lot of filler that wasn't needed. I just feel like we didn't get enough. Of, of their connection, of their chemistry, of their banter, everything about it. There's just something missing between, for all of these books, at least for me, like there's just something missing for me to like really, really fall in love with these characters and fall in love with the story. Don't get me wrong, the thing that I really liked about this book was Callahan as a character and his progression and him trying to get over his addiction to alcohol and trying to fight for himself in order to fight for this found family that he's found with Alana and her daughter. By the way, the daughter's not biologically hers. She's technically Alana's sister's daughter, whatever. She's raising her like she's her own because 
Alana's sisters got her own set of issues that we don't really have to get into. I just felt really, really bored reading this, to be honest. It didn't really make me feel anything. I don't know whether it's because of the writing. Like, maybe Lauren Asher is just not the writer for me. Like, maybe I don't like her writing style as much. Or I just felt like there was a lot of things missing. For example, it is a second chance romance book, right? And I think that they didn't have enough backstory for the foundation of the relationship while they were growing up their whole like falling in love with each other and all of that stuff i don't think that they had enough basis for the start of the love story for their connection to really convince me that they're soulmates you know what i mean and i do feel like it was just really forgettable I think there was a lot of scenes in this that I just don't remember. I can point out three important scenes, but other than that, I'm just like, what actually happened in the book? I really don't know. I think that they could have cut a lot out and they could have included a lot of other backstory in. And also, not gonna lie, Callahan, if you really think about it, his dialogue is so cringe. He'll say these things to Alana, they'll banter a little bit, and he'll say some things that, oh, he's like flirting with her or like having dirty talk. But if you really think about it, the way that it comes across is so cringy because it's like, read the room, dude. This is not the time to be saying this or like, this is not the mood. And he'll just say these like out of pocket things. They want us as readers to swoon at it as if this is like banter, but he's just really saying things out of the blue let me try to find an example he can even sing songs which is both hot and oddly impressive only one or else you'll spoil your appetite before dinner i give cammy a look cammy is her daughter okay her daughter's right there i give cammy a look as i drop off a plate of fresh cookies for the tea party cal bats his lashes at me what about me what's the point of saying anything you were always a fan of having dessert before dinner anyway only because you were on the menu he winks this man is the devil. Literally, like, why do they call that banter? This is just so cringe to me. Only because you were on the menu. Like, why is that so cringy to me? This is 15-year-old type of banter. This is what guys who think they have Riz, this is what they say. They're like, oh, Riz is off the charts, and it's that. This is nothing! There's one part where he says, he said, what book did you like the most? And he says, Catcher in the Rye. Red flag. Red flag flag i'm sorry i know that this is a very like trendy thing for me to say like oh if you like catcher in the rye it's a red flag but it is but it is and he likes catcher in the rye red freaking flag this is this one is so cringe i'm not completely detached from reality i understand the value of money knowing how to spend it isn't the same thing as valuing it my teeth grind together valuing your money means knowing where to spend it not how look at you being all wise i'm more than just a pretty face lana i have a brain too who lied to you and called you pretty she bats her lashes. You did. While I was between your legs with my tongue deep inside your needy. Take that, you little witch. She chokes on her breath. God. Please, no need to call me God outside of the bedroom. It gives me a complex. Literally, they're just having a regular conversation and he'll just like say these things. It just stands out so much from the actual conversation that they were having previously. Like, this is not banter. This is just like straight up weird sometimes. And I'm like, Calhan, I love you. I swear to God. But you need to- no. But no. Because that is cringy dialogue to me. That is very cringy for me. Yeah, that's just some examples of Cal having the mind of a 12 year old when he tries to flirt with Alana just because it's so cringy. Um, and yeah, I just felt really bored reading it. I wish we got more of their like emotional connection. I think there was a lot of history that they had left out of it. I just felt like one last thing is that I think that the progression of the book and the pacing of the book was really off because the whole middle part of the book is like over 500 pages the middle part of the book was scene after unnecessary scene and then you get towards the end where cal is like i want to be better for you alana i want to be better for myself i want to be better for your daughter cammy i want to be a part of your family i want to be sober this is such good character work, right? Like, we love to see the character growth. We love to see Callahan coming to terms with his addiction and trying to overcome that, which is one of the parts I really loved about this book was the presence of addiction, how it's hard to get over it. But then the way that he gets over the addiction, him going to rehab and him getting sober happens within four or five chapters in the last third of the book it happens so quick him trying to become sober happens so fast 
when in reality it's not that easy to get sober i mean i wouldn't know personally but i just have a feeling it's not that easy to get sober or else everybody would be able to do it right and they just kind of brush it over and just really quickly get make him get sober within like three or four chapters and i just feel like i wish we got more of that struggle for him in the book like i think that there was just so many ways this book had so much potential and could have been different and they just missed the mark i'm not a writer of this book okay i don't want to tell them how to write the book or anything like that but i think that it would have been really helpful if maybe he decided towards the beginning ish of the book that he's gonna get sober for his family for alana for and show throughout each chapter the struggle it is oh he was able to be sober for like a month and then something happens or like he gets anxiety because they talk about how he drinks to cover up his anxiety to cover up being around people pressure etc etc which i thought was really really well done i don't think there was enough struggle with his addiction it was like he's addicted and he just never chose to get better and then all of a sudden he's like oh i'm gonna get better and then he becomes sober within a couple chapters that happens so quickly it just felt so abrupt if that makes sense and i just really wish we got more i just feel like there was a lot of life and a lot of depth and a lot of human emotion missing from this book i wish we got more of calhan's internal conflict of his past hockey career like, i think a lot of what happens within all of these books is that they talk about these things that should have a really big emotional impact but they'll say it in little sentences here and there like, oh i i was really anxious to go to this party so i drank a little bit and then that's that's that on that but they don't talk about the urge to drink and like how hard it is there's just something missing in the life of the book and this also happens with his hockey career alana and callahan talk about how his hockey career became over and it was really hard for callahan but that's all they say about it oh my hockey career my life was over after i stopped playing hockey and then the way that they talk about it is just in passing and nothing really hits emotionally the emotional points don't ever hit emotionally it's really hard for me to explain why i just felt like this book was like there's just something missing about it and even the alcoholism was really bland they don't really make it like it's a really big problem they just say oh you're drinking again overall i think that it was a three out of five stars i did not hate it but i also did not love it i just think it was really forgettable and there was just so many parts of it that i felt like were missing from the book with it being over 500 pages the couple itself was lovely i think there were lovely parts specifically with the daughter her name is cammy I thought it was so heartwarming every time they had those little scenes with Callahan and Cammie bonding with each other, with Cammie saying like, oh, I want you to be my new daddy. That was so cute. That was actually really, really cute. And I do like those parts, but I think overall as a book, it just really missed the mark for me. This whole series really missed the mark for me. Yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on the book. I really, really want to know yours. If you loved the book, please let me know because I feel like this book is really loved. And I've seen it on Goodreads and I've seen it at a lot of places, but I don't know. There's just something missing. I'm sorry I keep repeating that, but there was just so much potential. There was so much potential and it just missed for me. And yeah, that's all I'll say on that. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the book below if you've read it. And I will catch you next time.